So I've been shooting branded vertical video content for quite some time now for global brands and for some really cool people. I've always had just like a MacGyver vertical rig and I figured that I need to have a dedicated vertical rig because more and more jobs are coming in and they're vertical videos. So then let's build one. My name is Victor and in today's video, I want to talk about my vertical rig and I'm super excited to share this with you guys because I've actually taken this to a recent shoot and everything that I need for this build is here. It has a five inch monitor, a wireless transmitter, follow focus, V-mount battery, everything. This is kind of like my prototype, my Mark one. But since that I've taken this to a shoot, I think I have a few upgrades already that I'm going to make. And that's going to be another video, but this is the base of it. This is the heart of it. Essentially, these are the things that I already own. I just made it for vertical filming. So let's get started with the build. First up, let's talk about the cage. This is the Falcom F22 quick release cage for the FX30 FX3 and that it has a lot of mounting points and also a lot of F22 quick release mounting points. This cage is very versatile because all four sides of it have the F22 quick release rails and you can even use your traditional screw on camera rig parts and the built in bottom plate is actually the F22 mount and the F38 mount. These are mounts from Mulanzi and Falcom and the F38 plate actually fits the Arca Swiss mounts, at least for the Arca Swiss stuff that I own. And if you have the F22 accessories for this cage, you can have the handles, the magic arms, so you can quickly attach or detach these accessories in a matter of seconds and save time on set. Ultimately, this is going to be your decision because there are going to be lenses that you specifically need for a job. It might be autofocus lenses, zoom lenses, prime lenses, whatever it might be. But for me, I opted in for the IRX 45 millimeter T1.5 and that I was just testing it with this one. And I'm also using this rig with the Surrey 50 millimeter Jupiter macro lens. And it's, this is a full frame lens for the FX3. These lenses provide clean characteristics, so it's really good for product videos or beauty shoots. This is the newly released Falcom base plates with its carbon fiber rods. And the reason why I got this is because it's a little bit better looking than the other competitors and that I just wanted this build to be dominantly Falcom so that all the parts kind of like synchronize with each other. And it also has a lot of mounting points for us to complete this rig. On top of the base plate, we are going to put these F50 quick release plates from Falcom and that these are Manfrotto plates. These plates are super convenient if you're rocking a slider, a gimbal and a tripod and that you can seamlessly switch your base plate, your camera rig into each of these accessories. Efficiency matters a lot on set. That's why I put these F50 quick release plates on mostly every gear that I have so that everything's modular and I can pretty much put my camera into a different build in a matter of seconds. So we're going to put this on the top of the base plate as well as on the bottom of the base plate. And the main reason why we're putting the square mount on top of the base plate is to have two mounting points for the vertical rig. This is because most base plates that I own are usually front to back rather than side to side if that makes any sense and that we can't really mount two screw holes. What happens with the square base plate is that we can mount it horizontally for vertical con because the side mounts for the cages, even other brands don't have enough spacing. And with this one, we can just turn it and put two screws on there. If we put one screw on the bottom, your base plate will always rotate and you're gonna have to re-tighten it during the shoot. And that's gonna be a pain and that you don't want that happening on set because you're gonna lose some minutes by adjusting and re-tightening your base plate to your camera. It's always good practice to have two mounting points for your base plate. Before we continue on with the build, I just wanna mention how easy it is to make high quality vertical content with the help of Storyblocks. You get unlimited downloads of their full library and they have a ton of vertical content templates for Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro. You can access the entire library in Premiere Pro and After Effects through their Creative Cloud 
plugin. Plus, they offer a lot of amazing vertical stock footage. And if you can't find a very specific vertical clip for your video, you can opt in for the 4K files to just crop for your vertical content. I've done this multiple times and here's an example with the branded content and that we had to get some space or moon footage to fit the theme of the shoot. It was quick, efficient, and we had delivered what the client wanted for their video. I highly recommend learning more at storyblocks.com slash Victor Laforteza. Next up is the side handles. We're going to use the F22 Falcom side handles, and this is super easy to install. All you have to do is slide it in and you're done. The mounting points are actually super sturdy, and this build is a hefty build, and it feels super secure in the hands. And also, unlike your typical side handles, you still have to screw it on. And since this one is using the F22 quick release system, you can mount it on any F22 rail on the Falcom cage. Since we opted for a cine lens, we're going to put a follow focus on the rig and this is the small rig mini follow focus and I think it was on sale for $79 when I purchased it and I think regular price is $99. But anyways, it's smooth enough and it's similar to the tilt to one. So either way, you're going to be good with both options and it's going to help you focus properly with your cine lens. I was going to put a lens support for this rig, but it just is a little too tall for vertical rigging and that the two small rig ones that I bought doesn't really go up that high. Luckily, this Irix lens isn't too heavy that we need a lens support for this build and the other lenses that I have aren't heavier than this lens so I don't really need it but it's just a good to have especially when you're rigging slightly heavier lenses. To power the whole rig we're gonna attach a V mount plate with the small rig VB99 and this powers the monitor, the wireless transmitter and it trickle charges the camera. I'm not really fond of using dummy batteries because I just heard horror stories. I'm sure if you buy like a really good quality one you won't have an issue but I just use it to trickle charge the internal battery and it makes the camera last for a long time during a shoot day. One of these batteries lasts me about three to four hours powering these three things and that I only need two of these on a full shoot day. Next up, we're gonna attach the monitor. This is the Atomos Shinobi 5 inch. I bought this way back in 2019 and it's still holding strong. I kinda wish I put a screen protector because I didn't, so it, now it has a lot of like micro scratches. But once you turn on the screen, you don't really see the scratches, but I highly, highly recommend to put a screen protector on on any monitor that you purchase. We're going to attach the monitor on the side handle using an F22 magic arm so that we can rig it vertically right on top of our Sony screen. And this way you can see the controls of your screen and then the feed of your main image. So the cables that we have are these ultra slim HDMI from small rig and these lasted me for a couple years now and they're going strong. And for cable management and routing these wires, I suggest putting it in between the camera and the V-mount plate. There's also two cables, which is the USB-C for trickle charging your camera and also a DC cable to power the wireless transmitter. After you've tucked everything in between the V-mount plate and the camera, you can just sandwich them in so that it stays in place throughout the shoot. Last but definitely not the least is the wireless transmitter. I'm using the Axoon Cine i2 and you can use the Cineview HE as well. They sell it separately as well instead of a transmitter receiver combo and they're both good. It transmits to my iPad or my Apple devices and that we can just hook him up through HDMI, let's just say on a laptop to a bigger monitor so that clients can see what we're shooting on a bigger screen rather than hovering over your bag trying to see like, oh, is the shot really good? I just find wireless transmitters are really good for client work, especially if a client wants to approve a shot or review the shot on the spot. And that's it. If you have any questions about this rig or suggestions, feel free to comment down below. I love to chat about rigging because I don't know, it's like adult Lego and it's super fun to do because you kind of 
think of something it's like what is the solution for one thing and how can i improve my rig and you know just better shooting experience i think this rig is missing out a map box and also some things maybe that i could upgrade or kind of change but so far this is the heart and soul of my vertical rig and if it does change maybe i'll do an update video but i'll test it out throughout my production and see how it works and what i can improve but so far this is kind of like a mark one a version one of this build and that it's just gonna keep improving over time and as usual i'm giving away my sunset film lock pack and all you have to do to win is comment down below what are your thoughts about vertical video do you think they'll stay for a while and if you want to check out my normal camera rig click on this video right here and i'll see you guys in the next one peace no one now.